Okay, so now we are going to take a look into these three case studies that I already introduced. And for that, you need to open both the Rhino file and the Grasshopper definition that I provided you with in the course content. Okay, so now in the Rhino model, you can see that I have already defined the, the models, of course, for these three case studies. All of them are going to be related to concrete structures, but the strategies and the components of Karma that we are going to see in Grasshopper can be applied to all kinds of geometries and structures. So just take that into account. Okay, so the first case study, that's the one that we are going to start off with, focuses on a slab system, right? So you can see here that we have this slab and now it's resting in concrete columns, but you can turn off and turn on these layers and realize that we have also options for uh, using walls as uh, support elements as well, right? So, but let's start with the columns. And actually, before jumping to our karma definition, we are going to take a look into the theoretical principles under these structural systems. Okay, here we are. So these are basically uh, slab systems. And uh, the idea is to know which parameters are important in order to define the thickness of our slab, right? So we define the thickness in order to uh, limit the deformations so that they are not out of control, right? And of course, the span width plays an important role, which is the, the distance between supports that we have, as we have already seen for simple beams and even um, slab, slab uh, geometries in our introduction. But besides this uh, span width, right, this distance uh, between supports, it's also important to consider the span direction. Okay, so what is this span direction? This is span direction. You can see it here in the left side of the page. And uh, it makes reference to in which direction the uh, main stresses of the slab take place, right? So we can have either uh, one way slabs, right? And you can see this, uh, that they are um, symbolized with this arrow here. Or we can also have two way slab systems, right? So now you can see that one way slab systems are resting in these walls and two way slabs are resting in walls, but in both directions. And two way, two -way slabs can also rest on columns as we are going to see. So basically this influences the deformation as we are going to see, but also the stresses, right? Because in case of one way slabs, the stresses are going to take place just in this direction. So this, uh, this will affect the, the way in which a reinforced reinforcement, a steel reinforcement is placed in this slab because it will mainly be placed along this direction, right? And I mean, you can take a look into this uh, formula that it's used to, to, to estimate the thickness more or less of, of our uh, slab system. But now what we are going to do with Karamba is to analyze what difference does it make, that, does it make between one and two way slabs and how, what strategies we have in order, in order to design our, our slab structure, right? So that we don't increase its, thick, its thickness um, too much, right? So let's go for it. Okay, so now back to Rhino and Grasshopper. First, let's, let's activate the first uh, part of our Grasshopper definition, which is the first case style, right? So we right click and we click on enable. And now here I'm basically uh, referencing our uh, geometries from Rhino. So I'm going to turn into the wireframe mode. So here we are. And we are starting with the slab supported on columns, right? So the idea is that here we are referencing our Rhino geometry. So what we can do, for instance, and here I am referencing the, the walls. So what we can do, for instance, is to plug the walls here and you can see how now um, the slab is being supported by these walls. And what I can also do is to select all kind of walls because now I'm selecting the walls in the X direction, but you can also uh, click on set uh, multiple surfaces and you can click, uh, come here to Rhino, but you need to turn the layers on before that. So uh, walls X, select objects, walls E, select objects, click enter. And now you can see that we have referenced these walls in um, Grasshopper. But let's disconnect this parameter and let's start with our 
um, the flap system supported on columns, right? So you can see the deflection here. And let's take, a, let's take a look into our grasshopper definition. So first we are defining our uh, elements. This is pretty normal. We are defining our surface elements as well. And we have a, an uniform load, right? Which is causing the deformations. And here we have two, some new components. First, we have the reaction forces component in which you can check the reaction forces, but also you can check the, the whole reaction force, right? Because this is important in order to check that we are applying the right loads because the sum of the reaction forces should be also equal to the sum, uh, sum of the forces, right? So this is an important component. And we are going to, this is also the display of results as, as we know it with the model view component, the beam view component and cell view component. And here we also have this um, grasshopper definition, let's say, in order to display the deformation values on the center of its slab span, let's say, right? So there will, it could be centimeters. Here we will have a deformation of three centimeters and here in the middle, just one centimeter for this particular thickness, which by the way, it's 25 centimeters, right? But let's get back to the results. So now we have seen this new component, the reaction forces component, but also we are going to use the cell forces component. And we use it in order to analyze the forces in our slabs, right? Because we saw bending moments and shear forces and so on and so forth for beam elements, but we have these same um, forces also for slabs, right? So we analyze it with this component. And now what I'm doing here is to get the maximum values. So the reason that uh, we are for using this component is to analyze whether we have um, one way or two way slabs, right? So here, for instance, this slab system is supported on columns and we can very easily recognize that this is a two way slab. First, because of the deformation, right? Because the deformation is, let's say, two dimensional. It's taking place um, along these two directions. And also, if we take a look into the maximum uh, bending moments, we can see that they are pretty similar for both directions, right? The maximum and minimum bending moments are more or less the same, which means that this is a two-way slab system. And it will um, make a difference when we uh, define the steel reinforcement because we should provide it in both directions, right? To cover these bending moments. Okay, so that could be uh, our first introduction to, to this first case in which the slab is supported on columns. And now let's try to see what happens when the slab is supported not on columns, but on walled elements in just one direction. So we have to connect this uh, parameter here. We have to disconnect our columns. And now what we need to do is to clear walls and to select just the walls in X direction. So we can clear to Rhino, walls X, select objects and we click X, right? So now we can see our, our wall elements along, X, along the X direction. And we can see, right? how the deformation <laughs> now just takes place in along uh, one direction, let's say, right? So this is the first indicator that we are dealing with a one-way slab system, right? And of course, now if we take a look into the bending moments, we can see how the bending moments along the x-axis are almost zero, right? Because this would be the because the x-axis of the <laughs> of the beams, that's confusing. We can also display it here with this component as we already saw. The x-axis would be this green arrow here, and this is actually pointing along the y-axis, but the global y-axis. So it means that the bending moments along this axis, which are basically in this perpendicular direction, are almost zero. So anyway, if the bending moments along one of the two directions are almost zero, it means that we are dealing with one way slab systems, right? So we would need to provide the steel reinforcement basically or mainly in this direction, which of course it's important. And finally, we can select also um, the walls in the, along the Y axis. So select multiple surfaces, we select everything here, 
and there we go so now we, we will see that we have a two way slabs right because they are spanning in both directions and we need to provide the reinforcement along both directions so if we also come back to our um, bending moments here we can see that we have bending moments along these two directions and of course they are also lower than the bending moments and the deformations as well when the slab was supported by column elements so that's important as well but now let's get back to our to the case in which the slab was supported just by columns now and let's disconnect the walls right by pressing and holding the control key and removing this wire okay so now we are back to the case in which the slab is supported just by columns and why are <laughs> why are we back here so the reason is just to take a look at the deformation right because the deformation is one centimeter in the middle and three centimeters in this corner spans which means that we should define the thickness of the slab in order to limit the deformations but the maximum deformation is taking just place taking place just here in this in this location so we could define the slab thickness just for this extreme case and usually in, in building constructions the slabs they have the same thickness for the whole story right because that way construction is uh, optimized and the uh, construction works can go faster right but i mean it would be not ideal if we have to define the thickness of our slab just because of these extreme values so there are several strategies right to opt optimize the material so that we don't need uh, the same thickness for our slab so we can optimize basically the amount of concrete reinforced concrete that that we are using if it makes sense and one of those strategies perhaps the most straightforward one would be to add edge beams right so edge beams are added along the perimeter of our uh, structure and they provide additional additional stiffness to these edge spans here so that we limit the deformation so what we have to do in caramba is come back here and connect these uh, line elements right which are here we have to connect them with this parameter so now we are added beams here as you are seeing we are adding edge beams right and now we can see how the deformations are more or less similar in all spans right and of course we can play with the thickness of our beams um, here uh, sorry here height so that we select the optimal thickness so that the deformation is the same in all spans of our structure right so more or less 60 centimeters which is uh, twice as thick as the slab that as we are defining more or less right that could be ideal so that the deformations are uh, similar in all spans of our slab system and we can we will in that way optimize the thickness of our slab right in comparison to the case in which we couldn't have these edge beams so that would be it regarding this first case study